Hi, I'm Craig Phillips, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own picket fencing and set your posts into the ground using tantalised treated timber. As with all of our builds, we always recommend you to do a drawing and work out the sizes that you require for your fencing. We're going to start off by installing our posts, first of all. These are going to be no more than two meters apart, like this. They're going to be merged into concrete into the ground and left to set. And then the next day, I'm going to put the Harris rails across the top and the bottom area. Now my fence is only going to stand up about 800 millimeters high, so it's only quite a short one. So we're going to have to have two Harris rails that will span across from each post. They'll be fixed down with nails, then we'll remove the clamps off them and actually bolt them into position. And then our slats, which are these small 800 millimeter ones, will be fitted directly onto the Harris rails, leaving a gap along the bottom and also creating a nice shape along the top of them. Now we could, in fact, cut these and create a peak, so it's like a spike on the top of it. Or you could get a jigsaw and cut a round area on the top. But my choice is, I'm gonna cut two corners off there and have like a hexagonal shape. But I've got about 150 of them to cut, so I'm gonna cut them all here in the workshop and then take them outside to install them. So I'm gonna cut a load of these slats at 800 millimeters to start with. These widths are exactly 100 millimetres, so I'm going to measure in 30 on one end and 30 the other end. Create a little mark here and here. And the same again the opposite side. Now, that has given me that great hexagonal shape that I want. Just got another 150 more to do. So that's about 50 cut there now to get me started, but first of all, I need to install my posts. Now, whatever type of fencing you're gonna be doing at home, you're gonna to have to fit your fence panels to some posts. I'm using a four inch by four inch tantalized timber so it's pressure treated with a wood treatment so it doesn't rot. But what I'm gonna to have to do is fix this firmly into the ground. Now below me is a hardcore, it's a crushed up old recycled stone, tampered down really, really hard. I'm gonna to have to dig my hole out wide enough to be able to put concrete in all the way around the post. So I'm gonna use this large fencing spade here to break the actual earth away. Now the concrete mix for your post wants to be a four to one mix. Now we've got a ballast here already mixed up, so it's sharp sand with gravel in it, comes combined and mixed together. All I'm gonna do is add my cement. So a four to one ratio should be two full buckets to half a cement. Applied into the mixer, a small amount of water, let the mix it, mix it all up for you. Once you've got a nice consistency, put it into your barrow and start putting it around your posts. And of course, if you haven't got an electric cement mixer, you can always mix it by hand using a shovel. Now I've finally dug my hole out. It's about 16 inches deep, so the post itself will be set right the way in, but I don't want to put it all the way to the bottom. Now I've mixed the concrete up, I'm going to apply some concrete in there, make a nice compact bed, and then set this in 
to the height that I want it and then apply the concrete around the outside. So now the concrete is in the base of there, I'm going to place him in position just lying on top of the concrete. You might notice I've put a couple of yellow marks on the floor here. I've actually paced my posts out at about two meters apart, depending on how big your fence panels are. It's about average about two meters in there. So that's surrounded underside with concrete. I'm going to apply a little bit more just around the edges. And then I'm going to get it level and apply a couple of battens either side of it just to stabilize it in place and then surround the concrete and bring it up to the top of the floor. So now the two battens are fixed in both sides of the post. I know it's level this way and I know it's also level this way. I've got my string line running in from one end to the other so I know the bottom is set in the right place. I can now start to put the rest of the concrete around the bottom of the post bringing it up to the floor height. So once you've got your first fence post set into position, you can set the furthest one away at the end of your garden, run your string line in between and then set your posts every two meters apart. Now I've completed all my fence posts, they're all set into position. We did this yesterday so the concrete's nice and dry and they're nice and solid. The next stage is to apply the Harris rails. Now a picket fence just this high is going to want two Harris rails and I'm going to use a 4B1 tantalized timber again because it's outside. One's going to be fitted to the bottom like this. I'm going to clamp it on and then I'll shoot a nail in it, hold it into position and then it'll be bolted down. The second one is going to be up round about this high, probably about 100, 150 millimeters from the top of my posts. I'm going to make sure it's nice and level. Once it's done and it's fixed into place, then we can start applying the slats. Now the Harris rails are held in with the nails, I can release my clamps and drill a clearance hole in there. And drive in one of my bolts. So now those bolts are driven in nice and tight. This is solid, it's going to hold the weight of all the slats when they're fixed to the Harris rails like this. What I have done, I've fixed a noggin on the back of one of the slats at a certain height. So when that sits onto there, that gives me the height that I want standing upright and dropping down below the bottom of the Harris rail. The first piece I'm going to apply is going to be perfectly flush level with the post because we know that this is level. We slide our set over to check the levels both top and bottom and if we're happy with that we can fix it into position You really can see by using a pacemaker and a nail gun, you can really speed the process up. Of course, if you haven't got a compressor and a nail gun, they can be screwed in or tacked in with panel pins. So now we've fitted the Harris rails and all the slats into position. The two end posts, we've got our overhangs hanging out. I'm just gonna cut them two off. Now they're cut off flush along there. The posts are overhanging a little bit at the top. So I've made a mark up 
exactly 120 millimeters from the top of the Harris rail. We know the Harris rail is level all the way around the fence area. I'll transfer that mark around here and then trim the tops off. Perfect. Now you can treat these back up again with some wood trimmings or you can actually get a cap that fits at the top of that if you choose. So that's my picket fence complete. Hopefully I've inspired you to build your own picket fencing. Now if you'd like to see more how-to videos please visit the website silverlinetools.com.